everyone welcome to another podcast where we go ahead and discuss the different options that you have to pursue masters in economics today we have with us cheshta and she would be discussing about the option of doing masters in economics from dtu welcome to the show cheshta thank you so much for inviting me to this podcast uh, i'm really glad that you invited me because i was in the situation last year where i had very limited sort of options and i was texting everybody on the linkedin please tell me whether i should join this university or not will i be fulfilling all the criteria that i have in my mind but unfortunately i did not get the answers to all my questions but uh, i believe through this video many people will get benefited yes so uh, jishta uh, tell us about your journey you know why delhi why did you and you know how is the campus there how is the life there life is good uh, core structure is very good uh, and when you enter into dtu you realize it's not very different from the other universities as you had a perception in your mind because the course has re- uh, recently been launched only in 2022 so you have the one thing in your mind that whether i will give, be getting benefited from this course or not as what i had in mind i want to i wanted to join dsc or igidr but now i am not getting this i only have two options dtu or hcu which i which one i should prefer so in my time i preferred core structure over uh core structure of dtu that's why i joined dtu and now i believe that is the only reason i'm still here so the core structure is good very nice i would say and how is the faculty at dtu a uh, faculty i would say uh, i also launched a poll in my unofficial group like please rate our faculty members so the general perspective that i got from that was average average to very nice theek okay? hai uh, now why they it is ranging between average and very nice first reason is our batch size is very small like only 55 students are there so you will get individual attention and every teacher know your name and she knows just by your expression whether you are understanding the concept or no and she will ask you like whether you are understanding this concept or not and then they will repeat this concepts many times and second reason is their curriculum and the faculty members are student centric most of them i would not say all of them but most of them are student centric again the reason is batch size is very small if you have 300 students in your class you cannot pay attention to every single individual and uh, thirdly all the professors that we have are phd scholars now they have the phd degrees and they are very well versed with the knowledge of their subjects so that they can deliver the very best lecture lectures to us and uh, one thing that uh, mostly people disagree well, like why pf our faculty is not good the reason is most of our professors are guest faculties we have very less permanent faculty members in our, our college for teaching ma because dtu is mostly for mba or engineering mm-hmm. so and this again i would say this course course has recently been launched so one reason is that got it so um, how about the curriculum do they go ahead and also teach you some coding language or do they make you uh, job ready corporate ready or is it very theoretical in nature no no it's not theoretical at all uh first of all the syllabus that has been structured uh, if i talk about microeconomics macroeconomics mathematics and statistics which is common in all the universities our university follow the same core structure which dsc is following so we have the same syllabus that dsc is following just the our course is divided into two parts like they study microeconomics whole whole microeconomics in one single semester we study microeconomics in two parts semester 1 and semester 2 same with mathematics and macroeconomics our syllabus is same but it is divided into two parts secondly apart from this uh, workshop and optional mba courses are been offered like sql power bi python machine learning etc these are optional courses you can opt for it and this will surely increase your employability in the future but these are optional it's up to you if you want to take it or not 
thirdly workshops like uh, in our semester first semester power bi workshop was organized it was a compulsory workshop for all of us so uh, it was the introduction to power bi and in this semester we were uh, given an opportunity to attend the workshop on wto so that the understanding of wto and how trade is being uh, is happened in two countries we can understand that and again the projects that they assign us are very uh, like you will have to use r you will have to use sql you will have to use python so they make you uh, um, uh, they make you ready for the job market thirdly uh, uh, for example dsc only offers dsc and other colleges only offer four courses macro ma micro math and stats but we have five core courses and fifth one is r our programming it is our core subject which we have to study both the semester first and second and this is uh, this is one of our core subjects so we'll have to do it anyhow uh one thing that i would mention here first when you enter into this university first month or i would say 10 or 20 days you will feel like this course is very rigorous you will have to do five courses you will have to attend the workshop you will have to do projects and then there is another optional course which you feel like if you didn't know opt of opt for it you will be lagging behind so there is a lot on your plate in the first month so you will feel this course is very rigorous and i will not be able to do that because it is also mathematical oriented it's not like hc or gnu courses which are more oriented towards theoretical aspects but sooner you will realize it is not that rigorous it is not that challenging as it is in bsc uh the reason why i am saying this they will teach you the same things throughout the semester but when it comes to checking your knowledge and exams the, they are very easy like if you are following the class notes and the questions that we are doing in the class you will easily score 8 plus cgpa so it's not that rigorous as it seems for uh, i would also suggest you if you open the dtu website and go to the syllabus page now you will realize it is same as tsc and we are taught the same things but again when it comes to checking the knowledge it is very less so in my uh, batch only there are 20 plus students who wanted to go into G dsc but they couldn't because of two or three marks or general category and so on i would not go there so now they are not facing uh, now they are not feeling like it's challenging for them because they think the things that they had done in the graduation is being repeated again and again this that is the drawback of the core structure and uh, third thing i would again mention this course is new with every passing year course is being make rigorous more and more for example last year econometrics course in our university was not that rigorous but this year it is and in the coming year it will be more rigorous uh, if i follow the same pattern that's all about the course structure uh, if you have any questions you can ask me okay and would you have any idea of the internship and placement opportunities there yes internship uh, like on 16th and 17th of this uh, month is internship fair is being organized and many companies are coming so i am not sure about the placement and internship for this year particularly because placement fair is still going on so we will get the figures uh, after this month only but if i uh, had to give you a general perspective placements are still low i would not lie about it last year only five students got placed this year only this will increase to 15 and 20 but in the coming years it will surely increase because our course uh, our course structure is good and it is to some extent and we are being taught such things which are required in the job markets so it will surely increase the future but right now it's not that good so any how about um, you know the research side if a student wants to do you know go to upsc or do phd or uh, want to get a government job then how uh, you know how can we link the course to these jobs uh, is the course good enough if you want to prepare for upsc ies ias services yes sure 
this course is very good if you want to go to in, uh, go into the government sector plus uh, as i mentioned it's not that rigorous and challenging so you can prepare for these exams simultaneously with this course and you will surely ace big aspect for example i wanted to uh, write a re Uh, just I lost you in between. You can do that if you want to take the initiative or not. Uh, secondly, if you are preparing for government exams like RBI and other exams, so you will be good here. Because again, I would say professors are very good and they are ready to help you. Plus core structure is uh, like that, that you will have some time to prepare for those exams. One thing that would bother you is 75% uh, attendance criteria that you have to fulfill at any cost. Secondly, classes are very like, they will range between. So we have a lot of classes that would may, uh, that would be the only thing that would be bothering you. Apart from that, you can manage, I guess. Got it. So also I wanted to understand how is the accessibility of the campus? Uh, if someone lives within Delhi, is metro easily accessible? Will the students be able to reach the campus easily? What is that? It's very easy to reach the campus. Uh, like you, you'll just have to take the red light metro and uh, Mansarovar is just 500 meters from our campus. So it's very easy to reach the campus. It's not that. Okay. And what about the fee structure? How much fees do, do you have to pay for two years? So it's slightly higher than what you pay in DSC and other schools like for first year it's it's ranging from 45 to 50k and for second year it's ranging between 50 to 55k okay for the entire year yeah so we can say about one that ten thousand for the yeah. entire course hmm. okay and uh this includes uh everything like the life the <laughs> Placement, everything, whatever, mm -hmm. everything, everything. Do. you don't have to pay anything apart from that. Like in due, you have to pay the examination fee and all. Mm -hmm. So here you don't need to pay anything. It's just the whole fee that you have to pay one time. Oh, got it. Last question, Jeshta. So what is it to be at DTU? Uh, so for example, if a student comes at DTU, uh, you know, how much will they learn in two years what will be the personality change how do you think you will rate DTU overall it would be five, uh, three out of five an average score because it is still developing its scores particularly MA economics if if you ask me about MBA and other even about bachelors in economics it is very good so if I had to tell you about only MA economics it's still developing so I would rate it an average score I got the same results from my peers when I uh, raised the poll in the group. It's an average. If you, if you are in Delhi and you are not getting DSC or GNU, you should you should definitely go for DT. But if you are getting, other, like for uh, my example only, I prefer DT over HCU because of core structure. So if you value core structure and the things you are going to learn in a university, so you should definitely prefer DT over all other state universities. I would not say DSC and IGID. IGID, there is no comparison. So if you have very limited set of options like Ambedkar, HCU and other state university, you should prefer DT over them. Got it. Anything else you would like to add for the students upcoming batch? See, uh, it, CUET was like... I don't know what to say about the CSUT. I had given that. So I know uh, all the questions were irrelevant. Most of them were irre irre irrelevant. So whatever you result you are going to get this year cannot predict your capability to join any university, specifically DSC and IGIR. If you are not getting that university, don't be so harsh on yourself because the paper was not in your hand. Secondly, even if you are getting any university this year, get into that. You can try again next year, as I was trying. Uh, but uh, getting totally dependent on CUAT for next year is not something that I would suggest personally. 
because CUET is becoming unpredictable every second year. So relying on only CUET is not the solution. If you are getting into a good university like SU and other DTU, and you want to give it another shot, I would suggest prepare for ISI, ISI or IIT. Uh, because uh, I would say from our university only, there are people who have gone into ISI after one year. Because our teacher were also saying that you should prepare for it. Because you have the capability and you should go there. If, because uh, if you have the capability and you are not getting the opportunities here, it is unfair to you. So that is the only thing. Plus, if and at any cost you get into a university, any random university, you have to put in efforts. Uh, engage in extracurricular activities, take particip participate in uni uh, university societies, like I am participating in economic society and other society. It will make you stand out from other students in your new university. Secondly, participate in competition, case study competition. It will make you ready for the job market. So even if you are not getting into the university which you desire to, you have you just have to take an, uh, an extra mile. You have you just have to go an extra mile to get things sorted for you. It will get sorted for sure. Got I think they are very well portrayed because students were very disappointed after this year's CUT exam. And I always tell them not to drop. You should just take admission somewhere and you can prepare simultaneously if you mm -hmm. want to prepare. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for your time, Cheshta. I hope that this session will be useful to students and, you know, this will help them make the right decision. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Yeah.